Hey, welcome back to Mastering Icon Fonts on the Web. Now, in the previous lesson, you learned about web fonts. But what about icon fonts? What are they? Simply put, they are fonts, just like the ones you find in your system or on the web. The difference is, instead of letters, they have icons. And you might think that, well, fonts represent the letters we're typing, right? Not exactly. Those letters are just shapes. So from a technical point of view, it makes no difference if those shapes are letters or are icons. So why should you use icon fonts? Well, they're great for adding symbols or icons without using images. And I, as I was saying in the previous lesson, images are not ideal for representing text. Plus, they do uh, increase the page load time. So let's compare an icon loaded via image and one that's loaded via icon font and see the pros and cons. First of all, the image is not scalable unless it's an SVG, but that's another discussion. Raster images like PNG, JPEG, GIF, they have fixed dimensions. If you make them bigger, they'll lose detail and become pixelated. Make them smaller and they lose their sharpness. An icon font doesn't have that problem. You can make it as big or small as you want, it will maintain its detail and sharpness. Then, what if you want to change its color? If you're using an image, you have to go back to the editing software and change it there, uh, re-export it, re-upload it, and you would make the change. But with an icon font, it's very easy, you just use CSS. In fact, Anything you can do to text, you can do to an icon font. Change the color, change the font size, uh, even add text shadow, change its opacity, you name it. Another advantage is the file size. Let's say you have an icon font with 20 different symbols and compare that with the 20 different symbols represented as images. Well, the icon font will be much smaller in file size. And in fact, it's going to be much smaller than a typical font because it will contain less characters than a full typeface. Then there is the browser support. If you want to represent an image with transparency in older browsers, for example, IE6 or 7, you're going to have a hard time doing it. But with icon fonts, because they're just fonts, it's much easier to do. Now, this is all good, but there are also a few downsides. First of all, you can only apply usually a single color or a gradient to an icon font. If you want more detail than that, then using images is your best solution. Then there's the grid they're being created on. Usually icons are created in grids of 16 by 16, 32 by 32, and so on. If you're using an icon, that's designed at a different grid size, you might get blurry results. For example, let's say an icon set is designed on a grid of 16 by 16. Well, you'll get the best results when you'll be using that icon with font sizes of 16 or multiples of that, like 32, 48, and so on. If you don't, you could still get some good results by using a CSS property called WebKit Font Smoothing and set that to anti-aliased. One thing to note here, Firefox on OS X doesn't render fonts properly, so what you need to do is add the following property. Moz OS X Font Smoothing set to grayscale, and this is supported in Firefox 25+. Those are two of the biggest drawbacks. Now, there's also the limit on what there is available because uh, take any icon font, you can't have every single icon in the world in it. And in fact, some of them just contain a few symbols. But you can easily overcome this by creating your own fonts tailored to your needs. But more about that later. For now, that's the basic stuff you need to know about icon fonts. In the next lesson, you'll learn how to use them to generate various icons in a web page. So I'll see you there.